let me warn you that what you're about to see is rather graphic and may not be suitable for young children sitting in the room. The person we've chosen has made a powerful and very personal effort this week aimed at forcing America to confront this killer head on. They know this woman. You may know her face. You may have seen her. One woman who made many of us aware of the issue is Matushka. She shocked everybody. I remember she shocked me, certainly, when she appeared on the cover of the New York Times magazine section. It takes your, I was going to say, your breath away. It's, uh, it's very compelling, really. I find it a little bit embarrassing, actually. I feel that it's a disgrace to the public because not everyone wants to see such explicit, open covers like that. A woman isn't made up of her anatomical parts. It's far more than that. So I applaud this woman for allowing her picture to be taken. It's the way it is now. Is they, they will now focus on sensationalizing, I think, the wrong issue here. I don't think he really falsified the data, whatever it is. He, I, I believe, if I read it correctly, is that he allowed more women into the study against the time frame that you were allowed to be in, but they're probably still valid in the sense that people are still alive. don't ever introduce me as a survivor because, first of all, it gives a misnomer. It makes people think that a lot of people who have breast cancer don't die. And the real truth about it is that 50 to 80 percent die over 20 years. Uh, secondly, I don't want to be surviving. I'm living. But I can't be called a liver because a liver sounds so, <laughs> so bad. So basically, I say I'm a thriver. Matushka was diagnosed with breast cancer, and her right breast was removed. In one sense, obviously, it was a devastating loss. But the mastectomy also gave a newfound sense of mission to her life and art, which she now dedicates to raising people's awareness of breast cancer as a photographer, writer, and lecturer. So you lost a breast, but you gained this whole uh, sort of new life in a way. It sounds like you went through this rebirth. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, it was really a, a strange gift in disguise. I mean, I'm not very happy that I had to lose my breast, and actually I didn't really need to, according to the recent, the, the doctors, even the doctor that went, I went to has changed his mind. Now, Matushka wants others to join her in the fight for health. It isn't so much that I inherited the gene that killed my mother. This is a two-step process. I inherited the same environment that she resided in, and I inherited the same foods and the same pollution living in New Jersey, and that I didn't protect myself from a carcinogenic environment. Silence was clearly broken this week by New York artist and former model Matushka. Pay attention, she said, with this self-portrait on the cover of Sunday's New York Times magazine. More and more women are dying of breast cancer, while too many Americans are looking the other way. It's a graphic and shocking image. A woman disfigured after a radical mastectomy. The picture appeared on the cover of the New York Times Magazine in August 1993. And with it, Joanne Matushka, a photographer and artist known professionally as Matushka, became a symbol of the horror of breast cancer surgery. The headline simply affirms what the picture is already saying. You can't look away anymore. The anguished politics of breast cancer, the startling self-portrait on the cover of the recent New York Times magazine, has turned a lovely woman with a brutal scar into a symbol. A symbol of the disease that some say is the feminist issue of the 1990s. The pictures we're about to show you are somewhat graphic and, yes, even shocking. But for those who brought this artwork to town, that's the point. American portrait artist Matushka shocked and really shamed the country in 1993 when she bared her mastectomy scar on the cover of the New York Times magazine. I just approached it like any other photograph or any other piece of art that I wanted it to make, make it the best that I could and make it very beautiful. I mean, it was an enormous publishing decision on their part. 
because if it had been on the cover of, say, a leftist magazine or a women's magazine with a circulation of 40,000, it wouldn't have gotten the attention it did. The circulation is 1.8 million. It was probably the first time most readers had ever seen a scarred chest. The responses ran 50-50 to the cover. Half thought it appropriate, half thought not, but all at least thought. Which was the point of the picture, the point of the article that described the battle to focus on the 1.6 million women who may lose their breasts or may lose their lives. Shocked. I was just stunned. I was quiet. I, I, I just said I cannot believe that they're uh, it's amazing. I was very happy that they were embracing it so strongly. It's very dramatic. It's it's very uh, real to life. I was a little taken back by it because it is a sort of a macabre, gruesome sight. It's not a it's not a pleasant sight. Uh, but I realize it has to be brought out.